everyone. Thanks for being here. It's a beautiful day in Denver, Colorado. I just got done talking to the players and the coaches and the staff in the locker room, and I guess I'll just reiterate what I told them to all you as my opening statement. I'm really happy for them. I was hoping that uh, we could come back to the center of that locker room and share the joy of a meaningful accomplishment, and we did that. We came together and celebrated, and you saw smiles, and you saw hugs, and you saw an incredible display of unity. And that's why you do this, because uh, it's hard to get. It's, joy is it's, it's hard to get, because you have to work through something with one another and figure out how you're going to give to one another, and then you get there, and it's just a, it's a whole different thing of being having fun or, or being happy. It was just incredible. I, it's hard to describe the feelings I have for those guys. We gave out game balls to Latavius Murray, who had such a fabulous game. We gave a game ball to Jerry Judy, who was, you saw, an explosive player. We gave a game ball to Justin Outen, and I was remiss by not uh, I gave a ball to Ezra Avero too, but I, but I forgot to give it to him. So I'm going to apologize to him on the way out of the locker room. He's getting it tomorrow. And then Bill Kolar, who, is, as you all know, is a legend around these parts, 43 years in the NFL, and these days ahead are somewhat uncertain. But uh, Coach Kolar has commanded a great deal of respect around this nation as a great position coach, and he deserved a shout-out for that. That was a lot of fun in a small way, but uh, the, the end uh, kind of unraveled on us a little bit. We ran out of players at a specific position, got us in a bad spot, but I thought the incredible fortitude of our team to come together when they had the ball inside our five-yard line and march it down the field in the fashion they did to kill the game is really indicative of a team that's got the guts to win. That's how you play winning football, and I'm so impressed by those guys. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Coach, uh, your feelings on your first uh, NFL win after uh, all the time you had in, in coaching, and was, were these two weeks uh, all you thought and more? Yeah, it was, it's, it's only my first NFL win in that position, as you know, but it's, it felt the same, real frankly. I mean, I've, I've had the same kind of feelings with other wins that I wasn't necessarily in that position. So it's, I think it's football that does that to you. I mean, whatever your role is, you just try to do the best you can and contribute to the team victory. And the fact that I wasn't calling plays on any side of the ball and I was managing the game, I didn't feel like it's, it was any different. I, I felt the same way, just felt great. Uh, so yeah, is, is it a significant thing for us? Yeah, for, for our family, it's great. But I, I honestly don't think that it felt any different because I've had a lot of great joyful moments with my teams before. That was one of them, certainly. Uh, yes, for you, Coach. The first one, you've talked about playing football, a certain style, playing yes, it the sir. right way. What did you see from the team? What stood out to you about kind of elements that, that looked like a winning <coughs> football team to you? Well, I, in the last two weeks, I've, I've, I saw it coming, actually, in practice before our first game together at Kansas City. I saw a, a different, I don't know, lack of a better word, flavor. I, I saw a little more attention to detail, and it wasn't because of me. I just think that everybody kind of came to a point where they'd seen enough and this, all these bad things happen, and they took it upon themselves to change it. And I saw in Kansas City last weekend, I saw us making a concerted effort to play together, to play complementary football. It happened all the way through the game, and some un, due to some unfortunate circumstances, we didn't get the reward. But I talked all week about to these guys about doing the same thing, only better. And they did. They they were physical. Our players were. They they you could see them rallying behind each other when a good play was made. You could see them defending themselves against the opponent when uh, there was a, a let's say a disagreement. And so you could see that they had their hearts with one another. They were aligned properly. And then the style of football we played is the style that I believe is winning football. When you watch that, that's how you play winning football, with the exception of the couple of special team situations that were unfortunate, I guess. But. Um, you run the ball, you, you have explosive plays. We talked about it last week and didn't have enough explosive plays. We did that today with the help of Jerry Judy and others. And uh, we, we continue to play great run defense. I mean, I'm so impressed by Israel's defense. I mean, I think it was like 2.9 yards per carry. And they were trying to run the ball, and they couldn't. And that, that puts us in such a much better situation. That's winning football. And, and the special team still, I mean, we did – we did some things well last week, and this week was we kind of ran out of players and put guys in tough spots, but we 
we played together. That's what it looks like. I didn't. I can't remember your second question. Well, you mentioned the game balls that you gave out. Yeah. A lot of times, coaches get a, a game ball after their first one. Did were you? Oh giving yeah, it? yeah, I did. But I didn't give it to myself. I, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Penner came over and gave me a game ball, and I was. Uh, yeah, my family has it. It's. Uh, it'll be a, a serious memento as we go forward. I'm sure. But yeah, it was great. I mean everything. I mean, I, it's coaching is a it's a it's a really a noble profession. I think because you're working with young men and you're trying to guide them. You're working in a game that's difficult to play. It's so competitive and physical. They're so tasking, and you have to go through rough spots to to get, to get there. And we did. And so yeah, it's, there's a lot of. I'm, I'm just so grateful. It's it's and I've said this many times, but it's really not about me. I was I was happy to be a part of this group, and I really respect those men in that room. Help me out here. <clears throat> yes, sir. With my memory. I, I thought a couple of weeks, weeks ago you mentioned something about a dock. Yeah. Where, where is the dock? It's Are you going a, back to the dock? It's a, it's a and can we get you <laughs> off the dock next year? <laughs> it's, it's in a very remote part of the world. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna a tell beautiful us? place. You know, I, I, <laughs> after we get to know each other, I may invite you. There, but <laughs> at this point in time, I'm going to keep the invitations to, to a minimum. Can we get you off the dock next year or no? Uh, well, We'll see. You know, okay. Who knows? I'm showing up for work tomorrow, and, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Follow, the follow is um, there's been a lot of talk lately by media people like myself. Is Russell Wilson fixable? Even George Payton got that question a, a couple weeks ago. Um, what did you see from Russell today, and, uh, and does, does he need fixing? Well, that whole narrative, I mean, it, it's, we live in the, the world we live in today. I, I can make some comments about that, but I think I'll keep them to myself. But I think we all understand that there's, a, there's an overload of uh, opinion out there that's masked. And so when those things start snowballing, then people just pile on. And I think it would be good that everybody be careful not to judge. You know, look about you, and we're, we all have our issues. I mean, we do. And so it's, it's wisdom not to judge others. And I think what you saw out there from Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson. That's who he is. He's a Hall of Fame NFL quarterback. Everything has to fit together for the quarterback to play winning football. And I think it's, you saw what it would look like if we got to that point. That's what I feel about Russell Wilson. He deserves to have his teammates stand up for him, and he, he got that. And I think that's... Uh, it's a noble gesture by his teammates. And it was demonstrated out there how they feel about him, too. You're okay, right? On December 26, was there one thing in your mind that you wanted to accomplish in this two weeks, and did you do that? One thing. Uh, well, I, I, I think I've spoken previously about, I don't know if it's just one thing, though, but I think maybe it is. If I just put it together and say it's a vision I have for how this game should be played. My experiences in this game are, are rich, and, and the success that, that I've been able to experience has been with football teams that have a, a shared understanding of what football looks like. And I have a strong belief in a certain style of football. That, that's the style of football I like. I like to see us run the ball. I, see, I like to see us play physical run defense and reject the run. And I like to see us be patient. I like to see us hit big plays and get the ball in your playmaker's hands. And we were kind of on the road to that last week on offense. And I think we got down the road today with that style of offense. But it fits with the rest of the team. You, so I don't know if that's, I guess, two, you, one word vision. That's it fit my vision. It also fits my vision of, of watching the players play. If you, I hope you notice. I, it, perhaps you know the, we all watch the ball, but I understand that. But I hope you notice how these guys are supporting one another and sticking together. And on the sideline, the sideline behavior has been so good. The communication with their coaches has been so good these last few weeks. And I'd, I was in a different position, and maybe it's not that much different. I think it is, personally. But and it's not because of me. It's because they saw the problems, and they went about fixing them. In my view, it's words are, are, are so much of less value than actions. And they, they acted out those behaviors. And it, it, there's a the result. Yes, sir. Hey, Jerry, um, if, if you do go back to, um, you know, the hyperbaric stuff you were doing uh, <coughs> to help others after this, and, and this is it for coaching, if, if that is the case, 
What will you take with you from these two weeks uh, running the show? Um, great fond memories, great relationships. Um, it's a relationship business, I believe. The, I've said this before with this group. I believe it's a, a relationship business, but it's not just a relationship business. It's our job as coaches to guide players down two tracks. One is to help them be better players and men and succeed in their life and their vision of the, their own vision of their life. And the second part is that the relationship builds as a result of that. And I've been blessed with great relationships for so many years. I have so many steadfast, lifelong relationships because of this game and the, the things we did together. And I, I'm, that's what I'm going to take from here. I've got, I've made some strong bonds in that room in my short time here. So, but you know, you never know. Jerry, you mentioned uh, Jerry Judy and the game yeah. he had. I mean, what kind of statement has he made over this last month, really, uh, in terms of looking ahead to next year and the receiver he can be? Yeah, the statement he made is the performance you see out there. I mean, Jerry made a statement verbally in support of Russell Wilson, and that was profound. But I also think you, you just watch the guy play, man. I, I've been so impressed by his abilities, and he's still growing. I saw a much more physical Jerry Judy, he's, I think, in – that's a it's a good thing. It's a physical game, and he's he's got ability. He's a, he's a great player. Coach, you've been really complimentary about the fans and Broncos country. How much you you really like it here and have loved coming here. And you mentioned earlier in the week about the seeds that are planted and the relationships. And I know it's not completely up to you, but if there's an opportunity that makes sense, do you want to be back with the Broncos in, in some capacity? I know. It's not completely up to you in that regard, too, to see who the next head coach is. But would you like to be back here? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. This has been a great experience, and I've met great people here. So, that, you know, we don't know what the future holds, but I think it's also a good segue to, for me to just talk about this whole experience, perhaps, in a broader scale, broader scope. But, I mean, this has been an unlikely series of events. I mean, you all, you all we kind of shake our heads, right? It's like, who would have thunk? Still, you're still you're still trying to figure out where it is. Well, I, well, I know what it is, but I think, the real frankly, I think there's something bigger at work here. I mean, all the things that happened for the young Demar Hamlin this week, and how the NFL came together in such a profound way, and held hands and reached down, and working with these talented men, both the coaches and players, it's been something that I see things a little bit differently, I think, than I did when I was on the dock. To your question, I. There are many things that that, uh, that are I still have to figure out. Real, and there's that's where the term it's it's hard to figure out. It's kind of a mystery to me. Like why were you here? I, and I, when I stood stood in front of him when I was talking to him about the whole events of last Monday night, I said, well, maybe this is why I'm here to try to help you explain this to you because I've spent uh, a good three months sitting in my pole barn trying to contemplate life, and maybe I've got something I can offer. But I tend to seek it's this mystery to its manifestation. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm not going to ignore it, certainly. I'm not going to just cut and run. Um, my other work is very important to me, to your question. It is. I mean, I, I care greatly about these players and their current health and their health after they play, and so that's that's not going to go away, but I think I must attend to this first. I really I really mean that. In the team meeting on Wednesday, we we're, we're dealing with tomorrow. I, I told the players that. And, you know, we got to we got to figure it out together. I, and I say the same thing to you all today. I guess I'm not sure what, why I'm standing up here. It's you couldn't write this story and make it believable, but here I am. So I aim to find out what it's all about. And so thank you for listening to me over these last few weeks, and you have my sincere wishes for a very blessed 2023. And I, I thank you for coming out today, and and to all the Broncos fans and supporters out there today. It's it was a great experience. So. We'll see. Thank you.